William Blake, who wrote the words of New Jerusalem, he was born in 28th to 11th in 1757, was clearly a very bright youngster, um, and at the age of four said he saw God through his window, and then at the age of nine, walking through the countryside, saw a tree full of angels. So he had a strong belief, and it continued right the way through his life, and he was very much into artwork, etc., and he created some really tremendous works, which you know few people seem to know of and uh, understand. You know what this man was about. Uh, you know he he wrote various books uh, and poetry, um, Sons of Experience, uh, Sons of Innocence, Book of Ahia, Book of Loss, First Book of Arisen, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, Song of Loss, There's No Natural Religion, and Visions of Daughters of Albion. And he he didn't join the traditional religions because he, he in actual fact was probably more worried about the impression the oppression that they seemed to be foistering onto people which was absolutely true and if we look at the churches today they are in actual fact uh, no better they, they, they don't follow any of the biblical beliefs and when they do they, 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 they are not teaching anything quite frankly and one of the things that I find uh, very disturbing is the fact that there's a lot of archaeology being done by men who are scrabbling in the ground and finding, for instance, just in one area alone, in the area of a place, um, or the area of Manasseh in ancient Israel, over a thousand references, this is just in the last four years, four years. Never mind what's happened in the last two or three hundred years and all the men that have dug there, but they're not mentioning it. For instance, you often hear there's the Exodus was not there, which in actual fact it was, very clearly it was there. But they found it in a city called Avarice, on the uh, on the eastern delta of uh, in Egypt. And they found uh, the bully, and uh, which are, are, are seals actually, of various people. They found, for instance, the area where the, uh, the people went across the Red Sea. And there were pillars put there by Solomon, actually. Um, and they, they were marked, and uh, when they were found, the one on the uh, on the Saudi side was taken down, but the one on the Egyptian side is still there. Um, and when he went under water, this man, he found the wheels of chariots under water. He could get at least one of them out, which had the eight-wheeled chariots, and sent them in. They found a horse's hooves and a lot of stuff under the sea there. And it's a land bridge where either side is a couple of thousand feet deep, but that sort of area is 200 feet deep. And when you hear that, oh, it's, it went through the Sea of Reeds, that's nonsense, because the Bible says the water stood up vertical and you know it was very high on either side, two or three hundred feet, 20, 30 stories. Um, and that was a, a miraculous event. And then when they come across the other side, all the topography of the land, and when they found the, the uh, hill of Yahweh, in that hill they found all the areas where, where, where the tribes were, and all the camping stands, and the circular places, and the twelve standing stones, and a whole lot of other stuff. The archaeology is there. You know, the problem is that the people who say, oh, the Bible is wrong, like uh, Kathleen Kenyon, for instance, when she said the walls of Jericho fell 400 years earlier. And that was only because she couldn't find an artifact, because she was digging in the wrong spot. But somebody else went back there, found these artifacts in the right spot, exactly where they should have been, um, and proved her wrong. But the headline for her sort of saying, you know, it was wrong, was sort of, you know, reserved for the second coming. And the finding right was that, she, that the Bible was right was a little paragraph on page 50 and a, a whole lot of advertising. And so nobody ever saw it, that the, the Bible was right and these other people were wrong. Most people still would go around 99.9% .9 believing the Bible is wrong. And then another guy got up and said, well, you know, the Bible is wrong, another big headline, because the Hittite Empire was there. And then, of course, when they found the Hittite Empire, it was reported like that. And people forget about it. that. was about 20-odd, uh, probably about 30 years ago now. No, it's more than that. It's 40 years ago when all this happened. And then, of course, now, of course, the Hittite Empire has been found, and they found the huge buildings and the cities, and we know exactly. They even found the 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 the, um, the uh, clay tablets with all the writings on. Them. Even the clay tablet from Tutankhamun's wife, sister, because they used to marry their sisters and became wives, and brothers and sisters married the, in in that particular dispensation of the pharaohs. And when he was killed by uh, by the servant, she said she didn't want to marry the servant which was clearly I, who was the Prime Minister, and uh, 
she wrote to the king of Hittites and said, could you give me one of your sons in marriage? Which he didn't do, and she was forced to marry Ai, and then she disappeared. He obviously, once he had the the right to become pharaoh deposit on him because she had that uh, very high um, office around her, uh, he had her killed. So, um, you know, once again, the Bible is proven right. And in so many other things, in a thousand and ten thousand ways, it's probably the most proven book on the face of the planet. As a matter of fact, this man here, who was a science writer, editor of newspapers, well-known, and a huge atheist believing in uh, the theory of evolution, what did he say there? He said, shattering the myths of Darwin, effects of life shattering the myths of Darwinism. And he had studied that and understood it and found that it did not match. As a matter of fact, if we look here, the, you know, they keep on saying that that uh, that the Earth is 14 billion years old. There are nine methods, and there are actually ten. There's another one I can tell you about. There are nine methods, scientific methods, that check the uh, can check the uh, age of the Earth, and none of them support a 14 billion year old Earth. Let me tell you what they are: radiogenic helium in the atmosphere, pointing Robertson effect. They're all described here. Persistence of interplanetary dust. Non-equilibrium of carbon-14, persistence of, sh of short-period comets, magnetic field decay, decay, dissolved nickel in the oceans, meteoric dust in the atmosphere, continental drift. And I might also add the, the, uh, the study done by Max Planck and, uh, and MIT and put together by a man who's in charge of the Southern, uh, southern Hemisphere um, um, geophysical years. His name was Barry Setterfield. He looked into that and also put it all together and said, you know, in actual fact, that doesn't support an old Earth either. And if you look at that, you can you can see that as well. So there's not just one method which uh, they keep on referring to, and even that method confirms that the atmosphere is only uh, a certain age old. It's, it's not more than 10, 10 11,000 years old. That is the maximum. And all those things there don't support an old Earth like they keep on talking about in this theory evolution, which is so wrong. Uh, you know, the, 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 and I've seen the articles where they've said that, for instance, crocodiles became birds, and now they're denying they're saying that. But I've seen those articles. And you know, if you come onto that site up there that I've got there, which you know YouTube has given us the ability to see things that has previously been held because these men are frustrated and angry that the information that they have found is not being put out. And uh, we've got the opportunity now to see it. We don't have to listen to these men who have got an axe to grind and want the status quo and they've got big jobs and lots of money pouring in. I mean, just think about that. Be, how many people would lose their jobs if evolution was proven to be wrong? So they, they keep it up. Matter of fact, it's so bad now, they won't even get on the stage. A stage with a, a creationist, because every time they get on, with a man who knows his his stuff, as one, one of them said, he said, these people come on, they're well prepared and very knowledgeable and know what they're talking about, they lose. They lose the vote, uh, whether it be in any of these big universities. So, and some of those uh, evolutionist uh, professors ran off the stage in tears, men running off in tears, because they could not win, and they were so angry and furious. Now they won't even get on the stage. Not because the, evolution, the, the, the creationists are wrong, it's because they know that they lose, and they know that the, 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 their theory has, is full of holes. And you get on with some of these professors who were evolutionists and who did work like that, and were professors, have changed their way because they know that it's wrong. And many, many men who are scientists say, say to these men, you know, we believe, we don't say anything because our jobs, you know, we could get checked out. But people are putting the signatures down. People are voting with their fingers and putting it out. The, 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 um, the fossil record does not support creation. It supports vertical lines, not from a tree coming from one base. It's vertical lines, the cow kind, the dog kind, the, the, uh, the horse kind, etc. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, please visit that site there. As I say, it, it, YouTube has, has provided us with the right to put stuff out that has not been able to be done before, and in full color and everything else. Thank you very much.